Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective. Compute and understand the return on equity ratio. The return on equity, ROE, ratio measures how efficiently management uses resources provided by common shareholders to generate profits. When a company only has common shareholders invest in the company, the ROE is computed as follows. Net income which is the return on shareholder equity, on equity. For companies that have common shareholders and preferred shareholders, the ROE formula must be modified to remove amounts related to preferred shareholders as follows. Net income minus preferred dividends divided by shareholder equity minus preferred shareholder equity. Net income must first be reduced by the amount of preferred dividends to arrive at the net income left over for the common shareholders, net income minus preferred dividends. Shareholder equity must be reduced by the amount of preferred shareholder equity to arrive at the equity related to common shareholders, shareholder equity minus preferred shareholder equity. You can find a company's preferred dividends and preferred shareholder equity amounts on its statement of shareholder equity. For purposes of this class, you can assume that no preferred shares or preferred dividends exist unless indicated otherwise. ROE is normally presented as a percentage to indicate that it is a rate of return similar in concept to an annual interest rate. So when you use your calculator to compute ROE, you should then convert it into a percentage rate by multiplying it by 100 and placing a percentage symbol behind it. If your calculator spits out 0.08, you would convert it into 8% as follows. 0.08 times 100 equals 8%. Knowing the ROE for a company for a single year is not very useful to investors because there's nothing to compare it to. However, if investors can compare a company's current year ROE to the same company's ROE from prior years, they should be able to recognize whether the company is becoming more or less efficient. For example, if a company's ROE increased significantly each year for the previous five years, it would be an indication that management is becoming more efficient at using investor-provided resources to generate profits. If the trend showed ROE declining each year, it would be an indication that management is becoming less efficient at using investor-provided resources to generate profits. And maybe management should pay the company's earnings out to investors in the form of dividends because maybe the investors could achieve a better rate of return on their resources without management's help. In addition, investors often compare a company's ROE to the rate of return they believe they can achieve elsewhere using investments in other companies, investments in bonds, or even investments in bank deposits, etc. When comparing ROEs between companies, Investors should be aware that even though two companies might have identical amounts of net income and assets, they could have totally different ROEs. In this situation, the difference in their ROEs would be caused by how their assets were financed. If most of their assets were financed by common shareholders, their ROE will be lower than if most of their assets were funded by debt, i.e. leverage. The example below provides key numbers for two almost identical companies, High Leverage Co., HLC, and Low Leverage Co., LLC. In year one, both companies had $100 of assets and $2 of net income. But common shareholders only financed 10% of HLC's assets, whereas common shareholders financed 90% of LLC's assets. This difference in financing resulted in HLC achieving an ROE of 20%, whereas LLC only achieved an ROE of 2%. HLC's ROE of 20% indicates that HLC's management was able to generate 20 cents of net income for each of the $10 invested by common shareholders. LLC's ROE of 2% indicates that LLC's management was only able to generate 2 cents of net income for each of the $90 invested by its common shareholders. HLC's management was able to generate a higher ROE for common shareholders because it borrowed an additional $90 of resources which it used to generate profits. Leverage tends to magnify swings in the ROE ratio both on the upside and the downside as can be seen in the example below. Did you notice how HLC's ROE in year two 
of 29% is much, much higher than LLC's 4%. Even though the management of both companies had the same amount of assets to work with and achieved the same increase in net income. The key difference between the two is that HLC is comparing its $4 million of net income to a small investment by shareholders and LLC is comparing its $4 million of net income to a large investment by its shareholders. Here's something else to watch out for. If two companies were to both earn $4 million of net income and both companies had the same financing structure at the beginning of the year of 90% equity and 10% debt, you would still need to know both of their shareholder equity amounts in order to compute their ROEs. In fact, some users average the beginning and ending shareholder equity and use that as the denominator in the ROE formula. In the example below, pretty big company, PBC, started year two with $1,000 of assets. In the example below, pretty big company started year two with 10 times the amount of assets that not big company had, but it still only generated the same $4 million in net income. Based on the ROE of the two companies, it is clear that NBC is using its assets more efficiently than PBC in generating profits for its common shareholders, as noted by its higher ROEs in years 1 and 2. One deficiency of the ROE is that it only compares net income to common shareholder equity, not to total assets. If a company is highly leveraged, that comparison will result in extremely high ROEs. However, if the same net income were compared to the total assets that management had to work with, as is done in the return on assets ratio, management may not appear to be very efficient in its use of assets to generate income. In other words, use the ROE with caution and use it with other ratios such as return on assets, ROA, to gain a fuller understanding of management efficiency.